beautiful spring day in South Carolina and I'm going to paint the scene that's in back of me with the live oak trees, the Spanish moss and the beautiful old tabby ruins. I've done the pencil drawing in my sketchbook, laid down a wash for the sky and brushed on some green for the grass. So the next thing that I'm going to work on is the trees and the last thing that I'm going to do is the ruins, the tabby ruins. So the trees are, the live oaks are pretty yellow. It's springtime and uh, foliage is coming out. Um, so I'm going to make a green mix similar to uh, what's in the grass, what I used for the grass, uh, except it's going to be a little darker and uh, the darkest areas are in the background behind the trees. So when I'm painting this, I'm going to save the trunks of the trees, leave those light and come back in and put some color in later. Um, I like to treat that background foliage as one big mass. So I'm going to mix up some color, uh, starting with my yellow. And I'm using a little quinacridone gold and a little raw sienna and a little bit of Prussian blue in there for the darker greens. But I'm going to start with some of the yellow and tr again try and keep this mix very wet so that I can work right into it. As I'm painting, I'm also thinking about leaving some places where we can see the sky. So I'm not going to paint it as a solid area. I'm painting it as big shapes and I try to change the color a little bit as I go along. Um, so. I'm starting with yellow at the top and then I'll go down and some of the grayish color um, for the live oaks is sort of a, uh, an olivey green so I'll put a little bit of that in too and I'll make sure that I come down right to the edge of this building and get some of that beautiful color in and it gets quite dark as it goes down uh, around the trunks. So I'm going to stop this tree here. I'm going to add, just do a little bit of dry brush out here. And then I'm going to get some good darks in behind. And for that I use Prussian blue because it's a beautiful deep blue. And I'm going to come in right back here. And I see all kinds of things going on back there, so I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna in there too. And I really want to have this edge nice and dark against the building, in between the building and the tree. And I'm going to put a little bit of that dark in between the trunks and around this other trunk. And if I can get as much color as possible on in one go uh, and get it nice and wet then I can go back into it and add a little bit of color but I don't have to come back into it too too often. I'm just changing the color on my brush and I'm going to mix up more of a bluish green because the tree that's behind in the distance is a little cooler and a little bit lighter in value. So I'm going to again come around this building and get a little bit of that color in between the palm and the building. And I try to maintain that same color on the other side of the palm. And then I'm going to move back into a more yellow color as I get towards another live oak that's up here in the distance. And you can see it's quite wet so I can go back in and dab into that. And I, I really like the edge of this beautiful old ruin. So I'm going to make sure as I paint that my brush follows that. Hello. Golfers going past. Nice day for golf. You can probably hear that there's a, a uh, lawn mower in the distance cutting the grass around here. 
Um, and now I'm going back into another live oak tree. So that one's closer again in the foreground. And that one also has lots of yellow in it. So I'm going to put some of that color in and make sure I really treat the tree as one big shape. Uh, there's some dark trunks in there that I'm going to paint, but that can go in after. So I'm going to paint right over that big trunk, that big branch, and just leave the trunk out. And that's going to be a nice, that's going to have a nice gray. And there's some distant trees in the back. And again, lots of darks in the distance. And I'm even putting a little bit of red in there just to give that distance. I think it's good to have this. And if you can get those darks in, when everything's wet, they're a lot livelier than when you do it on dry. So that's what I'm aiming for. Always painting a little more carefully at edges. And there's another trunk that I want to keep light, so my foliage is going to come around like that. And I maintain this light trunk over here. And I'm going back in, again, keeping some space for um, branches and holes in the tree. So let's start with a little bit of detail on my palm. Uh, lots of yellow in there, lots of gold, and then up at the top it's green, but I don't have much of the top of this in my sketch. So I'm going to use the finer part of my brush to put in some of that beautiful gold color on the palm fronds. And as I do that, I'm also going to get a little bit of darker green up at the top and let that bleed down into it. Um, and let that come right up off of the top. And then maybe with the fine part of the brush, and this is a nice round sable, I can get some of those fronds. Um, and then there's always a little bit of shadow on the trunk of the palm that's cast by the fronds themselves. Uh, I'll clean off my brush and the trunk is in full sun so let's get a little bit of warm color in there and do that trunk and I like to mix a bit of purple. Um, I happen to have cobalt violet on my palette right now and a little bit of yellow. I'm using some raw sienna and then I'll get a nice warm color for the trunk and that will contrast with the blue of the sky. So I'm going to gently bring that down, um, being a little careful to stay within that space on my sketch. And while I have that color on my brush, um, I'm also going to use it for the warmth of the trunks of those beautiful live oaks. Uh, the next step for me is really to think about what the colors are on the tabby ruins. And those are made of shell. Uh, kind of a composite and if you go close up you'll see the oyster shells that are in them. So I want to use a little bit of a blue color, a bluish gray, and um, maybe a little bit of warmth in there as well. So I'll pick up some of the different colors that I have on my palette. Um, there's a lot of reflections in there and a lot of beautiful soft colors, but I want to maintain the lightness. So the color that's on my brush is quite light. And I'll put a little bit of a, a purplish tone and then maybe I'll move into a tiny bit of yellow on there. But still keeping the value pretty light. A little bit of orange and gold. It's nice to, even though it's light, I don't want to keep it completely white. It's nice to have a little bit of very pale color, warm and cool on there. So that when I come in to do the darks of the windows, I'll be able to uh, contrast that with the light of the building. And I'm leaving a little light edge there because I don't want the color of the tree to come down into the color of the ruins. I'll pick up a tiny bit of that uh, 
those little bits of those puddles that are dripping down because my easel is at an angle. Um, and the one area that I want to be a little bit darker is going to be the building that's on the far left. The live oak has a beautiful, uh, the, the branches have a beautiful wave in them, so capture some of that wave even uh, up at the top where uh, these branches come up and are silhouetted against the sky and if it was maybe the right time you'd see birds up there on those. So I use a lighter touch for these. So now I'm ready to do some of the details in these pieces of tabby ruins. And this front piece is a little darker but there's light along the top, so I'm going to leave that light along the top. And there's another piece that comes out here. And then there's a window here, and the flat brush is going to help me do some of those shapes inside the windows. And I'm going a little slower now and observing a little more. And I'm going to get mix up a darker color and that's going to be my color that's inside and is sort of the shadow color inside the window. So there's a big shadow that goes across over here. And this is, this is thicker and drier paint for these little shapes in here. And there's a little piece in here. And I'll shift the color a little bit as I go, because there's one window um, where you can see the trees so I'm going to put a dark green in that one. Oops, the building's a little bit wet, but that's okay. I'll, I'll lift a little bit of that. And then there's some dark inside this window. A little bit of dark along the edges here. I'll use a little bit of shadow going around this doorway here. There's a shadow under. There's a little window sill here. And a nice shadow over here. And then on this side, there's also some nice rectangular shapes. And those repeat the rectangular shapes that I have over on the other side. And as soon as this is dry, then I can come in and do some of the stone work and some of the little details on the stone. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to put in uh, some darker blues on my trees, just to indicate the undersides of the trees. And then with a little white gouache that I have on my palette, I'm going to um, make a little mix for the Spanish moss, because that's pretty opaque, and that's sitting right on top of the different tree uh, the foliage shapes. So I want to get a little bit dark in here and get a little more definition in the tree as if there's you're looking through parts of the foliage to some darker parts of the tree like that. And there's some dark right above over here and a little bit of darker and bluer in the back where we have this big blue tree. So I'm going to get, I don't want it quite as dark because again I want to I want to keep that sense of distance in the background. So I'm using a little bit more cerulean blue in this mix. And this flat brush is really helping me go around the tree shapes. And Again, while that building's drying, I'm going to mix up a little bit of white into my mix, and I'm going to make a nice greenish gray for that Spanish moss, and we'll see what that does. Um, it really is a very gray color, and that's hard to do unless I put a little bit of something opaque in there. I'm trying to keep my brush pretty dry so that when I drag the the little strokes of moss, you can see it hanging down. And it will show up against the darker background. I don't want to make it 
too prominent, but I just want to have a little bit of the, the a little bit of opaqueness just to give a sense of that of that moss. And that's why it's nice to have a little bit of gouache on my palette. And you could keep going forever on this, but at some point you probably have enough detail to understand what that texture of the building is. Um, along the edge of this one, there's a little row of something that was probably some kind of beams. So I'll put that in on there. And then there's some bigger holes, and I'll just change the color a little bit just to get a, um, a warmer color on the stone or a grayer color. And I have a bit of gouache, so that's giving me a nice opaque gray along there. Try to get a good variety of marks. And my dry brush is really helping me. The edge of this brush is really helping me to to say this is this is stone. But you don't want to overdo it with the texture either. So I'm going to stop there.